Good morning. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the bells mean call to worship, so that means you're supposed to sit down. <laughs> I'm so grateful that we have so many friends around here and that we can chat and talk, but there is a time for that, and then there's a time for worship. So I hope that you will join me in that. Um, just a couple of reminders. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> he said he was ignoring it. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right, just a couple of reminders that you have sign-in books at the end of the pews. If you would please do that, I would appreciate it. Also, welcome to all of our guests. It's hap I'm happy to see you all here. We also have guest sign-in cards. If you would please sign those so we can have some contact with you. Now, we have a very special announcement. Today is Ms. Judy Thomas's birthday, and we will be singing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you. you'll all stand. We'll sing along with the band for one song, and then you guys can sit back down.
Yes, ma'am. Amen. Um, so as a worship committee, we struggle often with um, order and what it is that we're doing when it comes to the liturgy. And we had a little bit of a conversation between the band and I about whether or not I was going to pray. And I, this is church. We should be praying all the time. So they can pray, and then I'm going to pray. So a couple of weeks ago, I went on vacation in the Caribbean. And everybody's like, wow, must be nice, winter time going to the Caribbean. I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, we kind, of, we kind of planned that. But as I was in the Caribbean, and it was Thanksgiving, and I was in the store, and all of a sudden I was like, I hear Christmas music. And I'm like, what is going on here? I'm in the Caribbean. I'm supposed to be hearing, you know, Calypso and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, I do know intelligently that it's the Christmas season. But it was hard for me to wrap my mind around it because, you know, I was in the Caribbean. It's nice. It's warm. It's sunny. There's palm trees. There's no snow. There's no snowmen. There's no Santa. But Christmas is, is all around the world. It's not just in the places that are cold, the North Pole, those kinds of things. So I had to, you know, kind of take that into my heart and realize, you know, it's everywhere. And so if you would pray with me, I would appreciate it. Dearest Lord, Please allow us to understand that Christmas and the Advent season is in our hearts. It is not about where we are. It is not about who we are with. It is about you and glorifying you. Amen. And now we are doing the Advent. sneak attack. Steps, steps. Let me break this candle over your head. Oh, I already worked a deal with somebody else. How about you get next week? Yeah. You can, you can go on. Next week. Okay. All right. So let's see now. Let's look up here because last week we talked about hope. So what do you think we're going to talk about this week? What, what do you think we're going to talk about? What? what? Yeah, that's right. Good job. We're going to talk about peace. So Kim set me up. So I'm going to use an example, OK? You can hold it. I'm going to use an example. Um, sometimes, after a big snow, isn't it fun to go outside? into the quiet and into the still and just stand there, listen to nothing. Have you ever tried that? Go try that after a big square code. But try it after a big snow. It is so peaceful. And it, oops, don't pull that off. We won't have a light in it. Um, it reminds me of what God has done. In the beginning, there was chaos. Have you ever read that? And in the beginning, there was just this all the time. It was a mess. It was terrible. And after a while, God, who was hovering over it, says, you know, peace would be nice. And so he spoke. He spoke. And all of a sudden, all this went. And it settled. And it was calm. And God began to create this wonderful world. And our God is a God of peace and order and creation. That's what he does, and that's what he brings. And so it's only fitting that on a nice, dark, quiet Christmas Eve that a babe will arrive, right? And that baby arrived a long time ago, we, so we know he's coming. We, we're like 2,000 years late. But we're still right on time, right? And in that silent night, and in that holy night, we will find, what are we going to find? Peace. So we wait for that, and we are excited about it. Okay? So, now Bryce, do you think you need a, a step stool? You're doing two purple candles. We don't care which two. Okay, grab it. Here's your light, man. Good luck. I'm not even going to get up. I'm, that's how much faith I have in you. I was going to blow it out when he came by. Can you get it? 
Okay, and in the piece, we turn to song. So let's sing. this week and let's begin with prayer dear lord we thank you for today we pray you be with us this week and help us as we continue to search for your peace in a very chaotic world and we thank you for it it's in jesus name we pray and everybody says Amen. all right there you go you guys I, is there a children's church no children's church today so so good luck everybody go <laughs> it's more chaos yeah more chaos <laughs> Our scripture this morning is Luke 3, verses 1 through 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight and rough ways smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. Well, 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 I got you all trapped here today, don't I? I have two questions. One, you can figure out on your own. And the other, you're gonna have to think about a while like I have an idea. Uh, the first question is, why was John in the wilderness? I mean, this guy is the son of a temple priest. Where should John be? Go ahead and answer that. Temple, I mean, that's where he should be, learning from his dad, right? Standing there and taking care of the priestly duties that happen in the temple. So the question to start this whole thing that I want you to just ruminate on it a little while, you know, mull that thing around, is why is this guy in the wilderness, okay? Now, to help me with that, Kim is going to come forward and do some drawing for me. So we're going to let her do some drawing. And she has an easel. I didn't give her much prep time. So this is going to be fun to watch. All right? But she has some, see, she has an easel, some paper, and two markers. Hopefully, they both have juice. That would be nice. One's black and one's red. So we're going to find out which way you're going to go. And, and she knows what to draw, right? OK. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good luck. And so I'm going to talk a while while she just doodles, I guess, is what she's going to do. And hopefully it will begin to help you understand a little more of why John was in the wilderness. Okay? Why is John in the wilderness? So the first thing we look at in this scripture was a whole bunch of tough names. Where'd Kindle? Good job. Good job. So did anybody notice she mispronounced any of those? No, of course she didn't. That was perfect. See? It's like I always say, if you speak with authority, nobody else knows anyway. So just <laughs> run them out there. And I think you got them all right, actually. So 
Ba-boom. That was awesome. All right, so there's this whole bunch of names. And what the prophet, or what the, uh, what the gospel writer Luke is trying to say to us is he's giving a very definitive time of when this story is taking place. He's really focusing in on a very specific time in history. All right? And he, he's doing that so he can vector John in before Christ, obviously. And so he's making sure that we all know this is happening in the time of Rome, in the time of these guys who are ruling to take care of uh, the, the nation of Israel. And now here comes John, who is going to be fighting for the soul of Israel. The very soul. Okay? Very good. All right. So because John appears in the wilderness, sometimes we think, well, well he must be in the scene. Have you ever heard of an Essene? It's in your scriptures. Some of the scriptures have the word Essene. And it's basically a bunch of temple priests who came, oh, disenchanted, shall we say, with how things went in the temple. And so they decided to go out into the desert and do their own thing. And do their own thing. And from these guys came this group, and you might recognize the name of this, the Dead Sea Scroll Community. You ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Qumran community? And these guys came out of that. And so sometimes people just say, well, John is one of them. John is one of them. And yet, what is John preaching? Right out of the gate, what is he talking about? An openness for anyone and everyone to come and be baptized and accept the good news. Anyone, come on in. Now that's a little different than the Dead Sea Scrolls, where they have to kind of bet you a little bit before they even let you in the door, all right? And most of the scenes, it's the same way. They're kind of like, eh, you know, we don't want you to go back to your home life, because then that means you didn't understand what we were talking about. So instead, oh, wow, okay, that's good. <laughs> I was going to draw a stick figure. Anyway, <laughs> there's a reason why she's doing it. And um, so anyway... Uh, John is preaching a message that doesn't work for either one of those communities. So again, here we are struggling and going, why is the son of a temple priest in the wilderness? And Luke begins to bail us out. Because what he quotes is a passage from the Old Testament, Isaiah 40. And Isaiah 40 begins with the statement of comfort. Comfort my people. They've been gone a long time, and I'm calling them home. If you remember the book of Isaiah, for the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, it's all about what's coming. And folks, if you don't repent, this is what's going to happen. And so that's what's going on in Isaiah for 39 chapters, and then it happens. Boom. And they're a long way away. One could even say they're in the wilderness. Their temple is gone. They have no place to touch, no place to see, no place to feel where they are at home. They are true spiritually in the wilderness. And Luke is calling, or Isaiah, I'm sorry, is calling to them there that their God has heard. Their God understands that they are lost. Their God understands that they are in the wilderness. And their God is now calling them home, and he will comfort them in the light of his new temple. Does that make sense? And so that's what Isaiah is saying, and Luke heard that. Luke hears that in his ear, and he goes, I, I need that right now. Because when Luke is writing, oh, the early Christian church is in the wilderness, folks. They are being persecuted on every side. They are being knocked down. Now listen, they're not being knocked down by just one group. It's not just the Jews that they're fighting with. It's the Romans. It's the pagans. It's the... They're alone. And in all of this, they're beginning to wonder. And they're beginning to think. Where am I? And why am I? Now, your question today is just like that. 
maybe you didn't think about it when you drove up, and maybe you aren't thinking about it right now as you're sitting here, but there is something I want to tell you. Why are you here? Seriously. Why are you here? I doubt if you pick on the pastor about the Bronco Chief game. I sure hope it isn't. I sure hope it isn't. So anyway, um, Vaughn inspired me. Yep, you did it, Vaughn. So if the sermon's wrong, blame Vaughn. In Luke 9, there's this verse about anyone who takes the hand of the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. And this fits so well in this. Because I want to explain again what's going on. The history in the past, or what people are picking up and bringing into the room, is severe. It's severe. And they're really beginning to question and wonder, is God good? And maybe you're doing the same thing. Is God good? Oh, we need to take it up. I never thought about that. Thank you. So, Kim, wonderfully here, has demonstrated in Jesus' day what a plow looks like. I don't think they wore overalls back in Jesus' day, but that's cool. I like that. Like if my stick figure, wouldn't you wouldn't have known he was in overalls. So that's great. But here's what I want you all to see. Why is that man in the field? What's his one job? The plow. So where is his focus? What's he looking at? Yeah, where the work is, where the work is, it's in front of him. Now, what's happened behind him? Doesn't matter, right? If he did it right, if he's looking at the work, what matters? What's right in front of his face. That's where he's supposed to be focused. That's what he's supposed to be paying attention to. That's where God is. And so for the people that are lost in the wilderness, the people who don't know exactly what is this all about, here comes this guy. His name is John. And he shares with them that someone is coming behind me who I, I can't even tie a shoe. And he is all that and everything else. But I want to baptize you so you're prepared for him that you're prepared, that you understand that you've fallen short. That if I can't tie his shoes, guess what? Neither can you. That we all have fallen short of where God is calling us. That this working in the field that we think we're doing, oh, that's good. this working in the field that we think we're doing, we're falling short of. Because you want to know why? We get distracted. Distracted. Money, right? Let's put some money somewhere. It can distract you, can it? Where are you looking all of a sudden? Not where God wants you to be, right? Right? Now, I hate to say this next one because that's tough. What about music? Why are you here? To listen to the music? Huh. That's interesting. That's interesting. Why are you here? Is it because your family is here? Your friends are here? You just had to see Mary today? Why are you here? You need to keep asking yourself that. You know, fame and ego and all this other stuff begins to get in our way. I don't, I don't know how to draw it. Yeah, there you go. Fame and ego. And we begin to think we're more important than what God has called us to do. It takes a special humility to serve God. Because all he is telling you to do is, look at the plow. Watch where you're going. Stay on task. Don't get distracted. This is your only job. John easily could have said, I gotta stand up for this. <clears throat> well, my dad is a temple priest. He's the be all end all. He gets to go into the Holy of Holies. When I get older, you know what I get to do? I get to go into the Holy of Holies. 
You all get to go into the Holy of Holies? I don't think so. There's one guy. Ha. Instead, where is he? He's in the wilderness. Why is he there? Because that's where God called him to work. Why are you here today? Why? This all looks like a performance, doesn't it? It's not. This is participation. Each and every one of you right now should be thinking about where does God want me? Why am I here? Your why are you here today hopefully will lead you toward I've got one job today. One! That's good news. One! To praise God. That's it. When we sing, we participate to praise God. When one person prays, we all pray and participate to praise God. When the preacher preaches, Mary's supposed to be yelling, Hallelujah, Amen. And the rest of you are supposed to be agreeing right along because you are participating in an active listening. And then you understand that by going out and doing in humility. No ego, not for fame, not for money. Where's that other thing? Oh, not for family. I mean, you know, when God comes... Father shall turn against child, and child shall turn against father. Whew. We're here to work in the field. Period. There is a voice crying right now. It's still. It's almost silent. God doesn't make all the noise that the world likes to make. He's a God of peace. And he's whispering to you right now. And the time we're about to go into is a mention of silence, participating prayer, and then glory to God at the end. We're going to do that as a congregation. We're going to keep our eyes where they're supposed to be. And we will give glory to God today. All right. God bless you all. Real good. Please give Kim thanks for what she just did. That was awesome. I seriously was going to do a stick figure. That is so good. So, and thank you, Vaughn. Man. Isn't she good? She'd be good. She'd be good. She'd be very good. So, uh, hit the screen so I know what's next. <laughs> I knew it. Okay. I was hopeful. We come to the time where we're going to prepare our hearts and we're going to pray. Um, again, we have a participation moment. Um, this comes every week, but today we have a special item that we need to participate with and pray for. And uh, Rebecca Nolting has brought back her prayer shawl because she feels it's a little empty. And so we need to fill it again with our, our prayers. So I'm going to hold it this whole time pretty much. But then what I'm going to do is I'll place it right here in this pew. And you guys, after the service, if you so want, just come forward and just fill it up a little bit. Needs a charge. All right? There's nothing more important than praying for people. But I will say this. It's really good when people know you're praying for them. That's really good, too. So never be afraid to say, hey, Connie, I'm praying for you. And I did this past week. I saw that long post you put on Facebook, and I couldn't read it to the end, but it was impressive. <laughs> so, and I never copy and forward anything. So, you know, I'm not being mean. So, well, unless it says if I get 50 shares, you know, Jesus will bless me, and then I'll share that. No, I won't. So we're going to go into a time of uh, silent prayer, and then I will lead you toward the Lord's Prayer. And remember, this is participation. Open up your heart to God and see what he has to say to you today. Let's pray.
in the chaos of the wilderness, Lord, we cry out to you. Often we feel like Elijah in the cave, alone, trembling, troubled, by what's gone on in our lives, by what's gone on in our world, by the lack of being able to hear your voice. Today, help us to quiet our minds. Help us to put away all those thoughts that might distract. Let us focus upon you, your goodness, your peace, and how worthy you are of our praise. Today we come not to be entertained, we come to give glory to you. And we thank you, Lord, that you are here to hear us. And this sound, this service that we do can be pleasing in your ear to the heart that is in the right place. Lord, you are so good to us. And you guide us in so many ways. We can't even begin to name them. But today we want to try. And as the service continues, we want to remember those things we need to be thankful for. And praise you all over again. You are so good to us. And we thank you for the gifts that you pour into our lives. Those gifts that give us hope and peace and love and joy. We pray that we never forget to pray for one another. For Christ prayed for us even in the midst of his terrible tribulation. If he can do that then, then we can pray for others at any time. And so, Lord, we pray for those who are struggling, those who are hurting, those who just need a recharge in life, that you might be with them and bless them and help them and let them know that the good gift you gave your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is not an in-the-past gift, but it is a present and active and wonderful presence in our lives. And in that presence and in that joy, Lord, help us to reach out and share the good news with others. This is what Christ is calling us to do. Help us to answer that call today. And Lord, we thank you that we can be reminded that we are the children of God. And so today we pray that you be with us and help us and guide us, for we are your children. And so now, as the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus Christ himself taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
please stand as we sing Angels We Have Heard on High, number 278, verses 1 and 2. Please have a seat. Can I say amen now? Yeah, go ahead. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, I came forward with Kim's drawing as a reminder that we give of ourselves in the offering. A lot of times we forget and we think we're just giving money. Oh, no, you're not. Give of yourself to God in the talents that you have. Use them and watch how God will bless you. We are reminded during this time at the communion table that Jesus Christ did not withhold his talents. For when he came to earth, he came as a servant to heal, to serve, to comfort those who needed it. And even in that dark night where all his disciples were about to betray him, Jesus Christ still came and offered to you he truly did come to serve and not be served. But it is an example that he has set for us that we ourselves should follow. This table is open to each and every person in this room. It doesn't matter how long you've been away from church. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. It doesn't matter except that you have heard the words of Christ and you say, I'll do that. If you're ready to do that today, we invite you to this table. And it was on the night of Jesus' betrayal, as he gathered his disciples around him, that during the course of the meal, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it and breaking it, he said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. In a similar manner, after the meal was over, Jesus took a cup. And he said, This cup is a new covenant. It will be sealed with my blood. Take, drink. And so we come to the table to eat of the bread, to drink of the cup, and to proclaim the saving grace of our Lord and Savior until he comes again. This is a gift from God to the people of God. And the people say, Thanks be to God. Amen.
we come today and we invite you all, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to come forward and make that declaration today. Or if you want to join our church, we invite you to come forward and participate with the joy of membership with us. I promise you we won't turn you away because Christ didn't turn us away when we came seeking. And so it's during this time that we invite you to stand that if you feel the call of God, come forward and join us. Please join me in singing number 244, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And you may stand if you would like. CCC Car Parade of Lights, December 18th at 5 p.m. So def decorate your vehicle and be part of the fun. If you don't want a drive-by, please call. If you want a drive-by, excuse me. <laughs> it's the east side, you know. Anyway, uh, please call the church or Shelly, and there's phone numbers here, or Mary, and you can come get those from me. Um, the Taste of Christmas, Friday evening. Sign-up sheets are on the foyer table and communion table. Please sign up today. Door winners will be announced. Bring goodies to share. Also, we have a worship team meeting this right after church, so stay here. That's a good one. Okay. And then do not forget, next week, um, we're going to have our congregational meeting right after church. And so you saw the, you saw the um, um, budget for next year proposed. So pray about that and your offerings and your tithes are what support that. And... Uh, Let's participate, shall we? And so I look forward to that next week too. Skyler will do a great job. I know he's not sweating it at all, so. Well, today the benediction is simply what you've heard all the way through the sermon. Work in the field. Keep your focus upon God. Don't let things distract you from what you're doing. You're doing a great job and you're right where God wants you to be. So God bless you all, real good, and amen. amen. Now please join me in singing soon and very soon. Thank you.